All right, this video I'm going to try to explain to you uh, the basics of overclocking. Uh, the thing here is each motherboard is going to be different in how it handles these things. Each setting will be named a little bit differently between each motherboard manufacturer. And sometimes you may have an older board where you actually have to go through and use jumpers on your system. In this video, I want to kind of show you the ones where you basically just go through, change it in the BIOS, because that's really how a lot of them are going nowadays. Um, big, big, big disclaimer here. Trying to overclock your system could result in burning out of either your processor or your motherboard or possibly even your memory if you have the option to go through and change your memory frequency settings. Um, basically what happens is you're going to be going through adjusting how much voltage is going to be going to the processor um, at the same time you're going to increase the uh, stepping speed uh, depends on how your motherboard is going to read it but it's usually the multiplier it's going to be worded something like that um, in some cases it's going to be just worded by directly changing the voltage um, it's it's a lot of different wording in them. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have a system kind of like this where you can simply just select the uh, frequency that you're going to shoot for, you can go through manually specify those. Um, you know, front side bus frequency, um, other uh, frequencies such as you know your PCI slots, things like that, you can adjust those. The CPU multiplier, like I was telling you about just a few seconds ago, this one calls it CPU ratio. You can increase that. Um, this one, um, you'd probably want to go through, change the actual CPU ratio is a little bit higher. Go through, check the stats on your processor. Um, and then basically as you go through and bump it up uh, you want to incrementally increase your ratio and then once you go through and increase these values you know you go through you set to like let's say 10 here um, go through save the setting restart your system do a benchmark with prime 95 I'll do a separate video on that all together um, You'll go through, make sure your system can actually run for, in my opinion, I like to run them for 24 hours straight to make sure they're stable. Uh, monitor your temperature while you're doing it because as a result of doing these multipliers, your system will generate more heat. And if you do not have a proper cooler on your processor, you will burn it out. Um, sometimes you don't have the nice option of just simply specifying uh, the predefined value you actually have to type something in like with the front side bus frequency you can input something here between 200 and 600 um, you want to go through again check the specs of your processor see what it can go up to uh, it can be cases where you're going to basically overclocking you're trying to make it go higher than you can you don't want to take something that's you know going to support maximum front side bus of uh, let's say 200 and then try and slam 600 into it. it it might work but chances are it's going to be too high of a difference and it's going to make your system crash out um, let's see what else we got uh, that I can talk about on here you have other things like uh, hyper transport uh, in some cases uh, you'll see options for um, what is it? hyper threading with the Intel chips. Uh, the changes speed settings on the actual hyper threading cores. Uh, I don't like to mess with the hyper threading cores. The hyper transport link speed, it's basically, um, you could think of it something like a front side bus uh, for AMD chips. Best way I can kind of describe that without getting into too much detail. Um, Again, check your specs on your processor. Start with what it says it can handle and then slowly increment 
up from there. Um, biggest thing you're probably going to get a real gain on is changing things like the CPU ratio. When you start screwing around with things like the front side bus, hyper transport link speeds, um, you're going to encounter more instability issues. Uh, the system is really designed more processor that is um, to run at a certain frequency, certain speed, and when it's either sending things faster or getting them back faster than it expects, it can have unexpected results, and that results in your crashes. So uh, then memory configuration. Uh, this is going to be where you're going to actually adjust the frequencies of your RAM. Uh, check the stats on your RAM see what it is designed to handle and you could try and force things like the uh, CL which I do not see in here the clock cycles for it uh, might be under no. uh, don't see it under here I don't think this board has it it might be under here I think this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think this is it here. Um, this is where you can actually go through, specify the different speeds. You know, like here they had this uh, cast latency. Uh, it's hard for me to see on the screen because I got a <laughs> recording thing over it, but. Um, then you got your RAS, the CAS, you can see um, pre-charge time, recharge times, cycle times. Um, generally, I would keep them all auto and try increasing, I shouldn't say increase, decrease the clock cycle. So the lower the clock cycle, the faster the RAM will actually respond. So basically for every clock cycle of your system, uh, the for example, you see it's got three clock cycles here. Every three clock cycles of your system, it's going to go through and update your RAM. Um, so if you obviously set to seven, the memory is going to get updated later. So you know, smaller is better. Um, trying to remember to set these all back to where they were. I can just cancel all my settings because uh, I'm not going to overclock the system at all. Like I said, it can cause instability issues, increased heat, all that stuff. Uh, speed spectrum options, um, things like that you'll see in here, uh, where basically the system can go through, change the speed by itself. Um, you can go through and do automatic clock screw, uh, screws, skews uh, for each uh, channel of memory, stuff like that. Like I said, each board is going to be different. It's really hard to kind of do a video on this. Um, but basically, like I said, the things you want to start looking at are going to be things like the CPU ratio or clock multiplier. Um, then you can fool around with things like the front side bus frequency because it's going to be a ratio. Um, depending on the wording of it, it's usually something like the CPU ratio to the front side bus um, or a multiplier to the front side frequency or something like that. Uh, that's how you're going to get your actual increases in speed. And as, of course, you increase that ratio on your CPU, you're going to have to increase the voltage on the processor as well. And that's going to generate even more heat, uh, more power requirements. So only do this if you are you know willing to possibly damage your board uh, do not do it if you're just kinda going oh, I think I can get a little bit of more performance out of my system so I don't have to upgrade because um, chances are you're gonna excellently goof up <laughs> uh, and burn out something and then you'll find out well now you gotta buy a new computer or new processor so uh, but that's the gist of overclocking Multiplier, front side bus, voltage, that's really all you want to fool around with. And the uh, CL or cast latency of your RAM. Uh, you can also sometimes apply the same settings in a nice graphical user interface in Windows if you're fortunate enough to have something like that uh, for your motherboard.
but that's the general gist of it all. Um, if you want something a little bit more in detail on it, I'll have to find a board that's going to give me a little bit better control. This one's more of an automatic, uh, where you basically just kind of set things and lets you do a little bit of stuff, but um, I don't really have a system here I can, so to say, apply these settings and show you the exact process that you actually go through of testing. So I have to kind of just explain it to you and I uh, hope that'll be sufficient for now. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later.